Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Lightfall is here today, and we are absolutely stoked. If you're anything like me, you really want to dig into all the secrets of Lightfall, and you don't want to waste your time. We want to make sure that we're getting the most out of our gaming time as we hit the new expansion hard. So today, we're going to be showing you all the things that you need to do on day one when you log into Lightfall for the first time. Now, whether you're watching this video, whether you're stuck at work, wishing you could play, or because you're desperately trying to get into the servers, because they're probably on fire, this video will be your guide on how to maximize your XP, leveling, and resources as you enter Lightfall for the first time. This will be a non-spoiler guide, and all the video content will be stuff that Bungie has already released. So rest your little head knowing that Mano won't wreck the campaign for you. On the contrary, it's time to show you the fastest ways to access the new content without wasting time. Jumping right into it, the first thing you want to do is get into your main character that you're going to use to run the campaign and get it set up. If you didn't see my Destiny PSA yesterday, you want to make sure that you get all your weapons and gear ready on your main character because more than likely, Destiny Inventory Manager, Ishtar Commander, and the other apps that use the no, API no, and transfer items no. will not work. No. So check out your vault to move those different items to your characters and get all the weapons that you want set up. This will also be a good time to check out all of the new mods with the new mod system and get your armor build set up. If you've used a specific build in the past, take a minute, look around at the mods, and see if you can set it up in a way that's very, very similar. For example, for me, I'm going to be recreating this absolutely broken stasis build for Lightfall that I posted a few weeks ago, and it's only going to get better now that even more things have been revealed with the patch notes, like the grenade and rezil nerfs. I'll put the link for that build if you're interested in the top right corner for you to check out, and it's absolutely insane, especially if you're going to be struggling with the legendary edition of the Lightfall campaign. Having a solid build on your character is going to be critical, and checking out the new mods will be a fantastic way to get acclimated to the new system. As a quick refresher, remember that Elemental Wells no longer exist. Instead, some of that functionality has now been moved to the Armor Charge system. What I would focus on is making sure that you can stack up as many Armor Charges on your armor as possible possible. Use things like Charge with Light and pop on a high energy fire for quick, easy burst damage for a short period of time. In addition, you'll want to focus on having a build that will take advantage of the in-game objects like Fire Sprite for Solar, Stasis Shards for Solar, Breaches for Void, Ionic Traces for Arc, and Tangles for Strands as they have some new functionality in the game. These builds can sometimes give you extra charge for your abilities like melees, using your class ability, and grenades. It will also help you in general get to know the new system. You'll then want to get your weapons set up and you'll want to have a range of weapons to use when you're in the campaign. I recommend having at least one sniper for some long range fights, maybe a blinding grenade launcher, a shotgun, a fusion rifle, and a range of heavy weapons like machine guns, swords, and rocket launchers. Grenade launchers actually are getting a big buff in Lightfall, so if you have one lurking in in your vault somewhere, maybe is a good time to take it out and try it out. You also want to make sure that you have a couple of slots open on your character if you pick up some different weapons or armor that you want to keep, especially from the new location, Neo Muna. You want to make sure you have space for them on your character and in your inventory. Next up, it's time to start thinking about leveling. Before you dismantle anything or do anything else, make sure that you have a ghost set up correctly. There's a mod on all the ghosts, which is called Guiding Light, which gives you an extra buff on all the XP gains that you get from bounties and just generally playing the game. Most of the time when people start off the season, they don't have a mod on their ghost because in the previous season, most people use the fragile mod named Blinding Light. Unfortunately, that expires at the end of every season and you have to reacquire it. So you want to make sure you grab a ghost and put on Guiding Light or the highest XP gaining mod that you have. That way, if you hoard any bounties or if you're just getting through the season pass as quickly as possible by playing the game, you will get more XP in general from that and also get more access to the artifact and all the mods that are going to be on there. It'll also help you get through the season pass faster, get you more access to weapons, materials, and more. Now, before you start dismantling armor, gears, weapons, or start popping bounties for XP, we got to hold up a second and think about what to do as soon as you've gotten your XP ghost set up. The next most important thing you need to do is get access to the seasonal artifact as quickly as possible. Now, this may require you to play through the first couple of missions right away. In the past three expansions, generally you get the artifact after the first or second mission. You then meet the seasonal or the expansion vendor and you get the quest and the artifact then. 
The first mission usually introduces the story, gives you a couple of cutscenes, gives you the narrative, as well as access to the other seasonal quests which you should pick up as well. Here's why that's important. If you try to start leveling without getting that artifact, all the XP that you may have banked or that you start doing when you run the campaign will be wasted. One of the key things about this is unlocking the artifact and all the mods inside of it. And by using your XP to get more access to those things, it makes the game easier for you. True, you might get some of the season pass unlocked, but it will be a huge waste if you don't pick up the artifact first. So make sure you pick that up. There's definitely going to be some quest lines that are tied to potentially getting the artifact and then running some of the campaign and seasonal missions. So you want to make sure you start with that. Once you've done that, you can start using power leveling hacks, dismantling items, and potentially popping bounties, as well as getting in a fire team to maximize those XP boosts. There's a little bit of strategy to this, so let's give you the basics on some of the power leveling hacks. The first one we're going to take advantage of is the well-rested buff. You see, every week when you get on at reset, every person on their account gets a buff called Well Rested, which will give you a dramatic increase to all your XP gains. With this buff, we want to get to the season pass rank where you will start receiving bonus XP either in general solo or with a fire team. This is very easy to do, especially as you're completing some of those first missions in Lightfall and getting XP. You do not want to necessarily pop your bounties here if you've saved them because you'll lose out on some great XP opportunities. But if you need to and you feel comfortable with it, you can pop some smaller bounties with lower XP if it gets you to that rank faster. So we mentioned a fire team in conjunction with the strategy. And the next step is taking advantage of the shared wisdom buff when you pop those bounties. You see, in the season pass, there's usually multiple buffs in your XP gains called Shared Wisdom. When you're in a fire team with another player who owns the current season pass, as long as the Shared Wisdom level in the season pass is reached by one person in the fire team, everyone who's in that fire team will then get increased experience gain when they get XP or when they pop bounties. The game looks to the person who has the highest rank and then bases the buff based on that person's rank. So for example, if one person in the fire team is level 17 and another person is level 5, the person who's level 5 is going to get the boost from the person who's at level 17. The first increase of shared wisdom usually happens at rank 5 in the season pass, which is where you're going to want to be after you get your well-rested buff. Maybe this is where you do a mission or two and you get your season pass rank up to that level, but you just want to make sure that if you've got any saved bounties or you've done any bounty prep that you don't use that right away. So to get this shared wisdom buff, all you got to do is ask someone to join on you in the tower. If you want to pop some bounties or if you have a clan or some friends that you play with, get into the tower and pop those bounties to take advantage of the XP buffs. But you have to be at the tower because if you're in orbit, for some reason, the XP buff and the shared wisdom does not necessarily work. Do remember that the well-rested buff is account wide so that once you use it up on one of your characters and get up to the five levels, it's going to be gone at that point. So this is maybe where you want to go to a different character and then start popping those bounties. If you need someone to join on, considering joining my discord with the link down in the description below where we talk destiny tips, people ask questions about destiny, but we also post about many other things in our community like sports, pets, food, and gaming stations. I'd say hold off on popping any bounties until you you get a little through more of the story so you're naturally gaining xp as well save some of the bigger bounties that you might have big rewards for xp those are usually the ones that have xp and then two pluses after them wait until you're a little farther down the road in the season past if you need some fast and easy leveling at the beginning with these buffs use the low hanging fruit like any daily bounties planetary dailies or anything from Zer, europa the moon just make sure you're with another person getting that shared wisdom buff as well as using the ghost mod that I talked about. So that covers XP and gaining huge XP buffs. So now we got to talk about leveling for gear. Hey, remember blue engrams, the bane of postmasters everywhere? Well, this is the one time in Destiny that you want to be getting blue engrams. Yes, you heard me right. Let me explain. You see, whether it's a weapon, a new armor piece in the game, or whatever piece of gear that you're getting, you want to be taking advantage of any blues you are getting in your inventory to help boost your power level. Remember, the power level of your character is the average of all the weapons and armor that you have on your character or in your account at that time. 
The first instinct for new expansions for many people to start instantly using these leveling garbage blues and putting them with upgrade modules into every weapon that they see. They instantly start to think, oh yeah, I need to level all these different weapons, but they don't realize that they're wasting a lot of materials. It's hard, but hold off for a bit. You're going to keep those blues on any of the slots on your characters and only level and use an upgrade module if it's a must-have. For example, if you're using a specific weapon that is necessary for a build and you really want to use that throughout the campaign, go ahead and level that thing up with an upgrade module. Just don't start popping upgrade modules on every single piece of gear, especially when you get a higher power level blue drop. You can always use a blue piece of gear just to help you get through the campaign and then later on use that blue gear to infuse really quickly so that you're ready to go. That way you save more of your materials that you may want to use for later. Speaking of gear, maybe head to the vendors and take a quick peek at the new weapons that they have in their inventory. They might have something new that you may want to try out. You definitely want to head over to the gunsmith and make sure that you pick up any new bounties from him. They will help you upgrade his newish reputation system and get your materials and weapons that you may want later. You can also check the season pass and get the exotic weapon. Usually Banshee44 is the person that has the exotic weapon catalyst, so you'll naturally do that anyway. We've got our build put together, we've got ways to get an insane amount of XP, and we have our gear and our materials all set. And now this is the time where we can rip into the campaign with Abandon. Now, you can certainly do the campaign on the normal level and level up slowly, but if you're ready for a challenge and you want to get even more increased rewards, go through the legendary version of the campaign. This will actually help you level up your character faster in the long run and give you more materials. Let me explain how. When you complete all the missions on the legendary mode, you're going to get access to a bunch of rewards. You actually get an additional chest at the end of each checkpoint in the legendary campaign. In addition, there is a new exclusive emblem for those that complete the campaign on the legend difficulty, and usually there's a triumph that is required for the expansion seal. Also, last year in the Witch Queen, every time you completed the campaign on legendary, when you got to the end on your characters, you actually had one of the new Lightfall exotic armor pieces waiting for you at the end. That's usually reserved for Lost Sectors, but in addition, Bungie is creating more paths to get those exotics, and this is one easy way to do it. You'll also get a massive power boost by getting a set of gear 20 above the soft cap when you finish the Legendary Campaign, which will be huge for those wanting to get higher power levels faster. Now, Bungie has said that this is going to be a challenge for some people as your power level will be capped, so if you don't feel comfortable doing this right away, maybe do a couple of missions, feel out the campaign, and see how you feel on it on the normal mode. You can always go back and replay them on the legendary difficulty or switch from the legendary campaign to the easier campaign. So once you go through that campaign, the goal is then to hit the soft cap on all of your characters and start to go through all of the powerful and pinnacle drops that will happen once you reach that level. You'll want to hold off in completing anything that will give you a pinnacle because those will be the highest power level gains for your character. For example, for a quick pinnacle, many people play three crucible games and get a weak pinnacle drop. And once you get that, you can't get that again. Hold off on hopping into the crucible, gambit, or doing strikes until the last possible moment so you can get that pinnacle drop when it will help you the most raising your power level. Of course, we have to tackle the green elephant in the room, and that is to get the strand subclass unlocked as fast as possible. Luckily, Bungie has said this new power is not going to be as grindy as Stasis was in Beyond Light. Now, you may have to play through the entire campaign to fully unlock it, but it will be something that you'll want to focus on and get your builds together using the new Strand subclass. So pay attention. Is there a quest line you need to do for Strand? Get that quest and start to knock it out as soon as possible. Like I mentioned before, any quest lines for Season of the Defiance will need to be picked up as well. It's potentially something where you can get some quest Quest steps done along the way while playing the campaign. So that's your day one checklist. That's how you maximize your gear. That's how you get your builds together. This is how you maximize your power gains. 
I hope that all of these tips have helped you out, and I hope that you are excited for Lightfall just like I am. Now, I'm hoping that at the end of this video, when you watch it, the servers are back up and not on fire. But if not, I've got a whole ton of other videos that you can check out that will help you in getting through Lightfall. So make sure to check them all out. I've put them in a playlist to help you out as well. If you found something in this guide to be useful, blast the like button and leave a comment down below because that helps to share this guide with everyone else in the Destiny community. Make sure you subscribe for more awesome guides on Lightfall and the future of Destiny content. If you do need some help, whether it's exotic quests, the new route of Nightmares Raid, quests, the legendary campaign, or whatever, come on over to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash manodester. We've helped hundreds of Guardians get the gear that they want and enjoy the game a little bit more. Good hunting, Guardians. I will see you in the next one.